Step one loves asking about headaches. Some examples of different types of headaches are cluster headaches, migraine headaches, and tension headaches. Most commonly, cluster headaches are unilateral and migraine headaches are unilateral. Tension headaches are gonna be bilateral. So that is us talking about the localization of the pain on one side of the head or on both sides of the head. Cluster headaches tend to last between 15 minutes to three hours. It typically occurs daily and it can continue between four to eight weeks. Whereas the migraine headache typically lasts four to 72 hours. In kids, it's a little bit of a different story between two to 48 hours. And the tension headache typically can be between four to six hours and certainly over 30 minutes. Probably the most valuable information to know is a description of each headache. What is each one like? The cluster headache is repetitive. It's repetitive and it's a brief, a brief headache. Cluster headaches can present as excruciating, periorbital pain with lacrimation, I put L-A-C, lacrimation, plus rhinorrhea. Now, when I say periorbital, what I mean by that is that the pain is surrounding or lining the orbit of the eye. Now, what do I mean by lacrimation plus rhinorrhea? Well, lacrimation refers to the flow and secretion of tears, and rhinorrhea simply refers to a condition where the nasal cavity is filled with a significant, uh, more than usual amount of mucus fluid, just a runny nose. Okay, so this headache doesn't sound like it's too much fun to have. It's going to be unilateral periorbital pain, so surrounding the eye, there's going to be tears coming from their eye, and they're going to have a runny nose. Now, migraine headaches are going to have a pulsating pain, so it's kind of like a throbbing pain. It's going to have nausea, the patient's going to feel nauseous also photophobia, or it can also present as a phonophobia. Now, photophobia and phonophobia, simply fancy words for saying that the patient's going to be extremely sensitive to light and have an abnormal, extreme sensitivity to sound also. The migraine headache may also have something called aura, A-U-R-A, aura. Now, what aura refers to is a specific type of migraine headache. It doesn't happen in all types of migraines. Um, and it refers to when a patient notices specific symptoms before the, the headache actually begins. These early symptoms that happen before a migraine are also called a prodrome. You might say, okay, well, what are these things that are happening? What thing does the patient experience right before this migraine happens? And the answer to that is it, it varies. In the clinical vignette, they can tell you that the patient's seeing visual disturbances. So blind spots, zigzagging patterns, flashing lights, scotomas, that can be a sign of the aura. Also paresthesias, a feeling of a prickling sensation on their skin. Also simply feeling a weak uh, right before the migraine happens. These are examples of some of the things that can present as aura right before that migraine uh, takes place. It's important to point out that you're not going to be seeing signs of aura with the cluster headache. The tension headache also will not have aura. The aura is specific to a subtype of the migraine. Along with no aura, the tension headache is going to be described as steady pain. Also, the tension headache is going to have no photophobia or phonophobia. None of these. These are going to be seen with the migraine. Steady pain, constant pain, no photophobia, no phonophobia, non-throbbing pain, constant. The migraine is pulsating or throbbing. Cluster headache does not throb. A little bit more about the pain being bilateral with tension headaches. The tension headache can present like a band around the head. In the clinical vignette, if they describe the pain like a tight band around the head, that is most definitely a clue towards a tension headache. I really can't stress enough that the tension headache will be constant and non-throbbing. So I've hit a lot of the big points about these three different types of headaches. There are just a few other things that I want to tie in. The cluster headache has the ability to induce Horner syndrome. So that is most certainly unique to cluster headaches. And just for review, the things we see with Horner syndrome is ptosis, which is the slight drooping of the eyelid, anhydrosis, that's absence of sweating on the affected side of the face, and also meiosis, which is pupil constriction. So if you see ptosis and hydrosis and meiosis, that's slight drooping of the eyelid, absence of sweating on the on the affected side of the face, and also the pupil being constricted, they're definitely talking about Horner syndrome, and that could be a tie-in and an association of a cluster headache. And it doesn't necessarily have to be all three symptoms. It's important to note that it can be a partial Horner syndrome. So you might just see ptosis and meiosis, for example. So you don't necessarily have to see all three signs of Horner's with the cluster headache. The cluster headaches tend to be more common in males, especially smokers. It can induce a partial Horner syndrome or complete Horner syndrome. Repetitive, brief headaches. 
described as excruciating periorbital pain with lacrimation that's tearing from the eye, and rhinorrhea, which is like a stuffy nose. The migraine headache is throbbing and pulsating. You're not seeing that throbbing or pulsating sensations with the cluster or the tension. Now with the nausea uh, seen with migraine, that nauseousness in the patient, you can see vomiting in the clinical vignette. And when you see that, you definitely should be thinking of the migraine. Now I do want to add in that the migraine can be due to irritation of cranial nerve 5, that's our trigeminal nerve. Remember there's V1, V2, V3, or the meninges, or the blood vessels. First aid seems to think that is a high yield for the student. And when I say blood vessels, first aid also stresses that it can be due to the release of substance P, CGRP, that's CGRP for calcitonin gene related peptide, and other vasoactive peptides. Mnemonic for migraine headaches, and that is pound, pulse tile, P for pulsatile, O for one day duration, typically one day, U for unilateral, N for nausea, and D for, you know, these things can be so bad that it's just disabling. And when I think of migraine, think migraine, my pain. I see all these awful things, photophobia, phonophobia, nausea, vomiting, throbbing. I'm not saying throbbing anywhere else. Now O for one day duration, which is a little bit confusing because it does say it can last between four to seven two hours. It's typically be one day, although these the, t the duration can be longer. So pound might serve useful to remember some of the things for migraine. And I want to make a note that there can be you know other things that cause headaches. For example, don't forget about that subarachnoid hemorrhage. In the net, we can see the patient coming in and describing the patient as the worst headache of my life. Also meningitis. Meningitis can be a cause of headache. Hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus can cause a headache. Different forms of neoplasia and arteritis also. For example, uh, temporal giant cell arteritis can certainly cause a headache. Don't forget that we treat the cluster headache with inhaled oxygen or sumatriptan. You're going to treat the migraine with abortive therapies like triptans, which are basically serotonin agonists acting at the postsynaptic serotonin receptor. They stimulate the postsynaptic serotonin receptor. You can also use NSAIDs, propanolol, topiramate, calcium channel blockers, amitriptyline. For the tension headaches, we can use analgesics, NSAIDs, acetaminophen. And for chronic pain from the tension headache, you can use amitriptyline. This is a really high yield topic. I hope this was informative and that it helps.